Hope you're all doing well. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. So for this week's video, I'm going to show you guys uh, the recording gear that I use. A lot of you asked me for the gear that I use, so I did three separate videos. One of my drums, one of my cymbals, and now today it's, I'm going to show you guys the recording gear I use. So I'm going to start with uh, the mics that I use. I'm just going to turn the camera around to show you guys. So here's the overhead mics that I use, and I say mics because it's a stereo mic. This is my favorite overhead mic. This is an AEA R88 uh, MK2, and this is a, a ribbon mic, stereo mic, so there's two mics in there. And I really love this mic, it sounds amazing. It uh, gives such a warm sound such a detailed sound it really gives like a 3d picture of the kit and I just have it over the drums kind of going at a diagonal so going over the kick and snare so I get the kick and snare pretty much in the center and then the rest of the kit to the left and to the right and then I'll just show you guys what I have here so this is a, actually a bass drum mic this is a Sennheiser 602 MK1 it's different from the second version I find this one is is better sounds better and I just tried using it on the rack toms that are tuned low and it really really works well so I've been using this lately or sometimes I just use a 57 on the rack tom and then here on the floor tom I have a Shure Beta 52 and uh, the same thing sounds great on low tuned floor toms uh, if if i have a higher pitch floor tom i'll use a 57. and for the snare just a good old 57 standard mic for the hi-hat here i have a beta uh no not a beta sorry it's a sure sm7b 
And this is a really versatile mic. You could use it on snare. You could use it for the kick drum. It's like a 57, but more hi-fi sounding and more detailed. But it really sounds great on the hi-hat uh, because it really rejects everything else. It's really a dynamic mic, so it just picks up pretty much the hi-hat and really sounds really nice. And I'm just going to show you guys what I have on the kick right now. And here, this is a EV665, Electro Voice 665. This is from the 60s. This was a broadcast mic. And this is a mic that came out before the popular uh, RE20, which is a bass drum mic. This is my favorite mic for kick. It's really for punch, if you want to get a really nice attack and punch and have an old school vibe, this is a really great mic. And here I have it paired with, this is a Kel HM2D and this mic really captures just the natural sound of the bass drum and really captures the low frequencies really nice and natural. And I blend these two mics together, they really work nicely together. And then here I have, this is a Cascade Fathead, uh, the MK1, and this is a ribbon mic also, very inexpensive, but really sounds great, and I use this mic for room. Either I put it in this room or I put it outside in the other room, and it really captures a really nice warm, fat sound of the kit. And here, on the floor. You guys have probably seen, seen these before. Well, you've seen this one. This is a, an old tape recorder mic. It's a Hewer, and I forget the model number. I don't know if it's written on it. It's just an old tape recorder mic. And here is an old karaoke, a uh, really cheap mic for a kid's karaoke tape, tape recorder. And I have these mics going through a passive DI and then going into the preamps and I have it placed here on the floor because it really gets they really get a nice trashy overall sound of the kit so here you pick up the bass drum the snare and the toms really nicely and you don't get too much cymbals in there and I, I use different mics here different trashy mics to get different tones when I want to dirty up the kit or give a really like trashy room sound and I really process these mics a lot compression EQ whatever and here is where I keep kind of have a little closet here full of stuff and I'll show you everything else in it but here I keep all my mic cases and cables and stuff here I have another Shure Beta 52 and I'll take down some mics up here to show you guys what I have. So here are my Kel HM1s and these mics, these are overhead mics, they're small diaphragm condenser mics. I use these really for a long time on the overheads and I still do. I really love them for like a more hi-fi sound. They are kind of dark sounding but they take EQ really nicely and they sound really warm and I still use them uh, very inexpensive mics but really great sounding mics and these are the first overheads I ever used these are MXL 603S and these are pencil condenser mics very cheap mics also and here I have an AKG C1000S I haven't used this mic yet. Uh, a friend of mine, Marco, lent it to me and I uh, haven't tried it yet. I think it's a fairly inexpensive mic also. And here, I just have like, these are cheap tape recorder mics that I like to try out and use for different things. Here's like a, a contact mic. So you could just put on the snare or the bass drum, get really cool tones with it. And here are headphones and more headphones, cheap headphones and actually headphones are mics so you can use them as mics if you put them in an input they'll pick up just like a mic 
and I just like to get trashy sounds with these. So I'll throw them somewhere on the floor in the room or hang it from the hi-hat, whatever. Put it on the snare just to get different sounds. And this here is something that I use on the kick sometimes. This is an Earthworks kick pad. So it's a mic pad with EQ. So it really works for, let's say, uh, dynamic mics. If you put it on a dynamic mic, it kind of adds just some oomph to it, some EQ, natural EQ. And, you know, sometimes it really works well, sometimes not so much, but I'll, I'll try it for different things. And now I'll show you guys uh, the preamps that I use. Here are the headphones I use. These are uh, Audio-Technica ATH M40X. And I also use these. Uh, they are called DAS cans. They are noise canceling headphones and they sound great too. If you guys want to check them out, uh, you can go to DASCANS, D-A-S-C-A-N-S dot com. And uh, really, really great, really good headphones for uh, if you want noise cancellation. And just while I'm here, I'll just show you guys next to the kit here, I just have a box with all different kinds of muffling and tone modifiers, different bass drum beaters. Uh, I have cotton here, I have socks, I have foam, I have big fat snare drums, I have cut out heads, all kinds of mufflers and things that I use and I like to have them right next to me when I want to, you know, modify the tone. And you have all different kinds of sticks and mallets. And I'm going to show you guys the closet here. So here I keep all my drum heads uh, that I use. I have all different kinds just to get different tones. Calf skin, uh, black dot, coated, all different kinds of drum heads. And here I have all different kinds of little percussion instruments that I use on sessions. And I have more here in the back. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Just little, little things, fun things. And here I just have a, a shelf of just odd, odd ends here, like a Mackie mixer, drum pad. Here I have. It's a bag with full of all my tour passes here, and I used to tour a lot. There's hundreds of different passes here. I never know what to do with them, so I just put them all in this bag. Here I have three Bata drums that I got from Cuba, and I use these on recordings too, but I also place them in front of the bass drum there, just to kind of get a, a bounce the sound off of them. It's nice mahogany wood. And it really makes a difference when I take them out, it changes the sound and they really help. And when here I have, this is a little amplifier, a little guitar amplifier, but I use this as a sub bass, a sub kick for the, for the kick drum. I leave the speaker in the actual amplifier and I just attached a wire to the speaker. So then I'll just plug an XLR and plug plug this right into a preamp and then place this amplifier in front of the kick drum and you could it really works well you could try it with different size amplifiers and you could get really a nice sub kick sound without spending a lot of money so here are the preamps I use and the interface I use so the interface right here this is a RME Fireface 800 this is a very old interface, but it still sounds amazing. And it's so solid, I never have problems with it. So I'm sure one day soon I'll have to change it, but for now it's still working great. And I'm gonna start from the top here. These preamps, this is an AEA RPQ2, so a stereo preamp. And this is uh, for the overhead. So this is paired with the AEA R88 mics on the overheads. And this is a very high impedance preamp. So it really gives the mic the full range from low end to the high end. And it's a really clean 
and warm sounding preamp, very neutral, but you really hear just the natural sound of that beautiful ribbon mic. And here I have, this is the warm audio WA273 with the EQ. This is a stereo preamp and I have a kick in one and the snare going in the other. And this is a, a Neve 1073 clone really sounds amazing. I didn't buy it because it was a Neve 1073 clone. I just bought it because it really sounds great and it's versatile. You can get very clean, warm sounds or you could get very aggressive, saturated and punchy sounds. And it has a very musical EQ also. Uh, and here I have the True Systems Precision 8. These are eight solid state preamps and I have everything else going through these. So all the spot mics, kick, the second kick mic, rack, floor, tom, room, the trash mic on the floor, the hi-hat. And I also have two inputs for my Kel HM1. Sometimes I use both overheads, the ribbon and the Kel HM1s. And these are transparent preamps, really great for drums anything with transients and they sound very warm they're very transparent but they have a tube like warm quality to them and here is I just have my laptop with a, just another screen and the headphone amp here this is an Aphex head pod 4 really great headphone amp a lot a lot of clean gain and uh, the speakers that I use are Kali IN5s. These are really great uh, monitors for mixing. Not too expensive, but they really sound great and really uh, give a really realistic picture of the sound coming through them. And here I just have a little volume control. And here I have, this is a guitar pedal. This is a Sans amp. Uh, I use it just to add distortion or different dirty tones to like the mix bus or kick or snare sometimes. Really cool, you really have a lot of different options for different kinds of distortion and dirt. So that's it guys, that's my recording setup. Uh, pretty simple setup, but works really well. Eventually, uh, you know, I would like to get some more mics and uh, different preamps and uh, compressors, some outboard compressors. But uh, for now, it, it works great the way it is and I'm getting really nice sounds that I, I like. Uh, so that's it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it answered your questions. And I'll see you guys next week. Take care.